Okay. The next clock we have to fix here is a New Haven uh, time only drop octagon clock. Some people call them a schoolhouse clock. This one uh, is veneered. Uh, it has a let's see, it has a replacement dial that's been hand painted. Uh, they did a nice job with redrawing the numbers. I don't see anything wrong with the dial. The dial's a nice nice looking shape. One little flaw right here. Made a mistake on the thing and put two lines there instead of one. But otherwise looks pretty good. Alright, we're uh, start this out by taking the dial off. Or taking, yeah, taking the dial off. So I need a uh, pair of pliers that take the pin out of the Here, take it off a little washer. And that hand, more hand, and we've got okay. Say time only. No calendar. Definitely a New Haven. Set this aside. Later, we'll take the bezel off and polish the bezel. Uh, <coughs> it says Fairdale clock. Okay, clock needs, case needs cleaned out. We'll do our typical cleaning of the. So it just needs cleaned. Let's check out. Uh, maybe second wheel. First wheel looks good. Second wheel. Actually, third wheel is the one that's. Maybe the center. After we be done, let's look at that. Okay, looking on the back. Third wheel is going to have to have both. It looks in fairly decent shape, just needs cleaned and oiled, probably. I'm going to wind this a little bit and see what we got. See if it's winding. Okay, it is winding. That's good. Click works. Alright. Let's see if this thing runs. Take the suspension spring out. Okay, capture the spring. 
clamp around the spring, like so. And then I've got to get a letdown key. It's really weird. Very tight. That's the intermediate wheel. Okay. Two and three. Come out. And take out this. Oof. That's gooey. All right. Yeah, that's definitely kind of dirty. Let's see the grease on that thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So what we need to do is we'll let down the spring, take it off, drop everything into uh, the uh, ultrasonic paper towel so we don't contaminate our Cleaning. Ooh, boy, that's really thick. Come off that way. Very, very dried. I gotta get some goggles here so I can see. Turned almost like wax. I'll get the ultrasonic while the ultrasonic is heating up going to examine for any problems with any gears. Take a 
work yet. We're going to have to do with any pivots. Clean them. That's got a pretty badly scored pivot. Use your fingernail and you feel it. Okay. Goop on this. Huh. Never seen one with a shield on like that. I have to look at this a little further. That's really strange. Yeah, clean it up. Yeah, well, that stuff's in the ultrasonic over there. I'm going to clean up these hands. Quite a bit of rust on them. And we'll maybe chemically re-blue them. Yeah, let's take some steel wool. We'll clean them with steel wool. And, uh, it's take a while. 400 grit sandpaper. Get that pretty clean. Take some. 99% isopropyl alcohol. And, uh, clean the rest of this. Super blue. And we will put it on the back here. Also give us some protection from rusting again.
parts out of the ultrasonic. Wipe some of these, wipe the water off. See the one thing that didn't clean up is around this uh, main wheel. A lot of garbage here. It's not going to come off either. Do some aggressive cleaning on that. We'll dry these off. You see, there's still a lot of gunk. In there, we're going to have to deal with that. Use a brush and clean all that off. Time for me to bring out the big guns. Good detergent. This is stuff used in industry and hospitals and what have you for cleaning lab equipment. That's the only way I'm going to cut the grease in this. I'm going to put it in some water and scrub each of these pieces with a brush because that grease is on there so bad it's unbelievable. out of there now. Still got stuff between the teeth here. That is so stuck on there. We're going to have to go in with a blade. Break the majority loose. And then scrub with a Those have all been hand cleaned now. Now it's time to polish pivots. See this one's scored a little bit so that it definitely needs polished. Intermediate wheel. Really got a lot of... This is the one that was uh, stuck. Definitely got a lot of nasty scoring around it. I have to polish that out. Okay, now everything's clean. And I need to evaluate this is going to run, whether it needs pushed or not. I think it would run, but I don't know for how long. My biggest concern is in this part here. This is really, really sloppy here. <coughs> What's happening is it's changing the depth of, of the gears in here. It's almost coming undone. I'm going to have to do something with that. Oh, yeah, we got to redo something. Probably the best thing to do would be make a ring put on top that's got to be held in place so that this is down 
because I'm afraid when that goes up like so. Okay, we're going to start with this center wheel. This is uh, pretty sloppy. You see it really wiggling around on that surface. Can't believe that that's not centered on the plate. Oh, it's off center. It's kind of hard to tell if I'm going to replace that. Hard to tell where the center is. Pretty big hole. Uh, the way to do it is to look where these teeth are meshing with this and various. Because that moves enough. Something's got to be not right when it meshes with other teeth. Let's put some gears in here and find out what's going on. Man, you talk about some pretty shoddy manufacturing. Here's one of the nuts. It's really sent whole, got a hole centered, doesn't it? That poorly manufactured movement. Yeah, we have two places where the center center wheels mesh with gears. One is that back gear, which is the minute hand, meshes with the uh, with the second wheel. And I can go in and look at how those gears are meshing. And if I push this up and I look where those are coming together, ooh, there Pitch circles are not going to be, I think they're going to be, well, that's pretty close. It doesn't look too bad. It's pretty shallow. Push it down the other way. Yeah, that's much closer to where it should be. Yeah, pitch circles now are... I would say are probably probably tangent. Roll it that way. It feels very smooth. Looking at the other place where these mesh is with the hour gear meshing with the intermediate gear. That's right here. Now with the intermediate gear. The intermediate gear doesn't move that much. So let's take a look. If I push down on that center wheel, let's say. bad. If I push up on it, where do I go? Yeah, it's getting toward the shallow end. So, what I'm looking at is that if I have to adjust this, where should it be? Should this be down and to the left or up and to the right? And I think the wear pattern is up here. I think it's got to be down here to keep the depth of mesh of those teeth where it should be. So this needs to be held more in that position. Okay. Start out, let's take a look at this first. That's really 
pretty flopping around. That's an awful lot. I think I'm going to replace this bushing back here first. Measuring this uh, pivot. It's a uh, two point uh, two point three two point three millimeter. So I've got uh, two millimeter bore, so I'm gonna have to bring that out to broach that out. But what I'll do is uh, doesn't matter whether I ream this out from the inside or outside because this isn't a tapered reamer when it's finished it's parallel so we'll, uh, in. i take that plate and I can't believe manufacturing again or engineering. I would have ex expected this to have been put together so that that hole is in the center of that. So usually the case. Look how off-center that is anyway. That's something else. Anyway, take the bushing Pushing here. I'm take a hammer. I'll take some flush. Okay, now we just have to broach this out for this to fit, and then that one will be done. Let's start with this cutting brooch. We're just barely in there. Okay, just a tiny bit on the other side. Okay, that should be. That should be there. Okay. That's better. That'll do it. A little bit of oil on that. a little better idea what we got to do on this other side. See that's that back side isn't flat but no. We got to do something with this. All right. I've decided what I'm going to do is I've cut a little ring that fits here. And uh, we'll give it a 
little stronger wear surface. If I put that on there, that's gonna significantly stop that slam around. And actually what I need to do then is just attach that so that the hole is down here the edge, edge of the existing hole you shift it down there a little bit and probably the best way to put that on is uh, a little silver solder and I'm going to take a little bit of flux put it only where I want solder to stick okay and then on the other thing we'll put down there it might be easiest just to silver this first but you know maybe what that's what what I'll do just a tiny, tiny bit off with a knife. Doesn't have to be a great deal. I can almost see. I get my goggles on here. And put a little tiny more on the other side. I think we should be there. All right. Okay, we got. That's much better. Not flopping around like it was. It's still not like it should be, but much better. Okay, and we got a new bushing on the back there. So that's good. The only other bushing I need to do, I think, is right here. And we'll deal with that. Looking. This wheel. Here, there's some end shake there. End shake there. End shake here. End shake here. End shake here. But this wheel here. There is no end shake whatever. Something is binding that up. I took a real straight edge and I put it on the plates. 
I don't see any deflection in the plate there. I don't see any deflection in the plate here. What the heck is Nothing there. I gotta check those bushings that someone put in there. Hey, someone pounded hell out of the back of this plate sometime in the past. Uh, I gotta check this because it's got no end shake in it. Okay, I've got to carefully grind down the bushing that whoever. Whoever put this bushing in, left some of it sticking up above the surface, and that cuts down, that destroys the end shake. So we'll cut that off, and flush. Okay, now we'll stone that and clean it up. We got that stone down now. What I'll do is I'll take some finishing compound and clean that up. Yeah, you see the on the other side too. That bushing is slightly raised above the surface. That's taking away end shake. So we're going to stone that down and then chamfer the uh, inside edge. We end up with some end shake on it here. Okay, there that's uh, been stoned and smoothed. That looks a little better now. We'll see, it did that both sides. Now we'll see if we have any end shake. Okay, now we got a little bit of end shake. That's better. That's much better. Okay, the only uh, bushing I really need to do now is on this uh, third wheel. This is awfully, awfully way out of tolerance. I mean, that's way more than that should be flopping around, so we'll replace that one. Okay, I'm not liking this intermediate wheel back here. Now we got to replace that bushing.
someone in a recent video complained that I didn't show how I cleaned the spring. The spring went in the ultrasonic cleaner. Period. That's all it needs. And people tell me you shouldn't do that. That's nonsense. Okay, anyway. Put the spring back on a wheel. I'm going to put some uh, lubricant in here. It's called uh, that PTFE in it. And, uh, does good job. It's uh, something one. I don't remember. Slick love. Slick 50. Slick 50. Okay. Okay, so I'll put the Slick 50 in here. And Put it on most of this, and as we wind it up, it will spread the... I use a brush to get it into the inner coils. But it's not a heavy grease. It's not going to make a lot of racket. It'll make a big mess. So we'll just coat the coils with some Slick 50. Take care of it, I'm sure. Now we'll wait to rewind the spring. So we get our key from our letdown key. That's number five. Five in here. And we're going to take, we'll put the loop on here. Put that in here. Well, man, it doesn't want to go. Okay, there we go. I think that's about it. Yeah, we got it. Okay, and now we will captured again and we're ready to go before we start putting things together. We take each of the plates and we take a toothpick and we crank this up just a little bit. And we go into each pivot hole and we, we clean them. Hi, Sonny. Come on in. Come on in, old buddy. What you doing there, bud? Come here. Come see me. Come here. You want to come up here? Come here. Let me give you a scratch. Did you scratch? Yeah, scratch. There you are, little guy. Okay. You had a bath and a haircut, didn't you? Yeah, you got a bath and a haircut. Yeah, come here. Put your feet up here. Put your feet up here. Huh? What's the matter? You want some love? You want some love, little guy? Yeah, give you some love. There you go. Okay, that a boy. Did Grandma send you down here? Did Grandma send you down here? Or did you just come on your own to see what I was doing, huh? Okay. That'll boy. Okay, I'm going to go back here and do this now. that boy. You going back up by Grandma? Okay, go by Grandma. Okay. Anyway. Use 
toothpick. Clean out pivot holes. Repolish them a little bit. Good. And uh, it's uh, just time only. Let's see what we get on there. gotta do this is kind of crazy we gotta put the uh, escape wheel in to this uh, side it gets kind of goofy trying to get this thing together it's a goofy design you have an escape wheel right here and then you're gonna have to put a nut in here it doesn't make a lot of sense I say this was kind of a goofy Goofy design. Anyway, let me check, make sure that we well, got a little excess oil being squeezed out of the out of the spring. Let's make sure all that excess is taken off. This is going to go in this way. I'm going to go in the hole there. Center wheel. I better get some oil over here. Get my oiler. And we use this one. Get some oil in here. Put a little, just a little bit of oil in here. And uh, put our center wheel on. get the second wheel. Which one of these is the second wheel? Well, look at the pivot. Uh, the, uh, the pinions, the lantern pinions. This has got the bigger lantern pinions, a slightly bigger wheel. So this is number two. That goes in here. This is number three. Go in here. Can I get that in there? Okay, then we've got the intermediate wheel, and that, uh, that's going to go this way, there we go, just like that, and then we've got, uh, that's it, then we've got to put this in, and we've got to kind of guide the this one that is just about the most god-awful manufacturing of a nut that I've ever seen. Put that on. 
There's another nut. That one up here. Come on, get started. Oh, hi, Sonny. You coming back down again? These are horribly manufactured brass nuts. again just to get the nuts started. Just a drop of oil on that palette, and as it goes around, that will put a little drop of oil on each tooth. And that's all the oil that we need. We can now wind this 
up, take the clamp off. Ooh. Springs scare me. Okay, clamp comes off. done. Clean up the case, put the movement back in, and the clock repair is done. Okay, I took the dial off, mixed up 50% linseed oil, 50% mineral spirits, and I'm going to brush that on the inside of the case. Keep the wood from cracking and also keep it from giving off any wooden splinter, a little wood dust. Might dirty the movement. Kind of seals the wood a little bit. Doesn't put a surface coat on, but sinks into the wood. Dries very quickly. right in. quadruple lot steel wool. Wow.
stick on there. Anyway. Okay, we're going to start put some Alchemox in here. It's a hospital cleaner. And a very strong detergent. We're just going to scrub this stuff off. There's years of gunk on here. Oh boy, that's taking it off. Steel wool. Alconox. Let me get that off there first. Do this and we'll get A rinse. Okay, got it all rinsed. And that's, uh, that's looking pretty good actually. Pretty dirty. together it really wasn't that hard to do. Just had to bend these tabs down so everything is now very clean, very shiny, looks much better. This is really old glass, there's bubbles in it. It's hard glass to replace. So anyway we'll set this aside and we'll get the 
case now and see how much we need to clean it up. If you recall, we coated the inside with a mixture of uh, oil, linseed oil, and, and uh, mineral spirits. That's looking good. All I need to do now, I don't want to mess too much. I don't want to break any of this loose. This is all... all uh, veneer, but I think I'll give a give a try with the same treatment I did on the banjo clock. We'll try the the uh, waterless hand cleaner and see if we can get any of the dirt out of here. See if how it responds and see if uh, let's just see what we get here. I'll just try a little bit here. See what it does. How much dirt is actually in this? It may not all be that all that dirty. It doesn't appear to be. But I guess this doesn't hurt anything, does it? Just to get some of this in there. Got lanolin in it. So we might be able to. section here. Really not all that dirty. That lanolin can maybe help that wood keep it from drying out a little bit. That's really not bad. I don't think it really... Uh, maybe feels a little smoother. Yeah, we'll keep that up for a while. Okay, this needs to be just cleaned. And this needs cleaned and polished. That's held on the back. The four little bendable clips. Careful, I don't want to cause a problem with that ink. I hope they spray. It looks like they may have sprayed. No, we'll just let's clean this thing. from corroding again. Okay, there's that. Put that back in there. And I'm just going to take a damp rag and wipe that off. So like, yeah, didn't want to get too aggressive with this, so 
I kind of just left it the way it was. Just use a damp cloth to clean it off. Now let's see if we can get this back on. Okay. These prongs down. And there we go. That looks a lot better. And I guess. Set this aside, and now we're ready to put the movement in the case. And if you remember correctly, I was done with these blocks. Okay. screws in. the suspension spring in, hang it on the wall, make any adjustments that we need to make as far as putting it in beat before we put the dial on. And there's the finished clock.